It lives inside is out this week, guys. And uh, here's my quick review for it. It lives inside. Uh, an Indian American teenager struggling with her cultural identity has a falling out with her former best friend and in the process unwittingly releases a demonic entity that grows stronger by feeding on her loneliness. Well, if you've seen the trailers for this, yeah, there is a, 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 a cultural element to this that uh, I guess I didn't, I didn't clue into in the trailers so much, but it's really played up in the movie. Uh, basically, there's like this demon that's caught in the jar and you got to feed it negative emotions and stuff like that. And um, my problem with this movie, I didn't hate this movie, but I also didn't really like this movie. Uh, it's because of a cultural thing. And I said this out of my straight out of the theater reaction is that um, it feels like this was based on some kind of legend that uh, from um, East Indian culture, but they've embellished it to transform it into this uh, movie, right? Into the big screen. And uh, I think the that embellishing will work for some, but it won't work for others because if you don't know the base legend of it, then you don't know what the powers are. Now, I was trying to think of a counter argument to this uh, last night. Uh, okay, well, hey, did you know all that much about Freddy when it came out? Well, we knew that there was a guy in the dreams trying to come out and kill him, kill them, and that, of course, if, he, if he's got the power of the dreams and he can make himself look like anything kind of thing. Um, did you know what the, the monsters were in Tremors before they showed it? No, but you saw scary stuff happens, uh, happening, right? Of people being drug underground and stuff. And there's stuff like that in this. Yes, there's an entity of some kind. You see that it, they're playing with the hair sometime uh, when they're just standing there. It comes in the closet at night kind of thing. Um, but you don't know, okay, it doesn't have the ability to jump out and attack me here or is it just my is it trying to get at me psychologically and just because of my unawareness of it it kind of took me out at times right um yeah there's the playing of the hair um and i think it has to do with the execution of the story so i'm i'm, I'm faulting a lot of this on the director um that oh you're being chased by a demon okay fine um let's pretend for a while that it's true but instead of calling the authorities or any kind of help, let's sit down and make a nice meal together. It's like that kind of thing. And you're, you're just like, wait, what? Shouldn't you be calling 911 here? Even if it's like a, a, a situation where they come and they, they say that you're full of BS. It's like, well, yes, you should be calling the authorities. Hello. <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, the acting. Um, let's get into some of the score sheet here, because uh, I do I do want to talk about some of the act. The the acting was pretty. It was maybe the best part of this. Um, acting, directing, and story out of a possible two points each. Cinematography and score are point uh, out of one point each. Um, point five is serviceable. Uh, it's a standard across all films, even if they're terrible. If it's got serviceable cinematography. It's a given kind of thing, right? It's if it's, it's a serviceable score, it's given. I don't remember anything about the score, the music in there. I guess there was a little bit. Um, cinematography was competent. Competent. Uh, the only reason why I would ever take a cinematography score away from a movie is that if it's like this all the time and you can't tell what's going on, it's got quick cuts where it's like, guys, let me breathe for a second here. Like uh, some of those uh, final movies in the Resident Evil with M Mia uh, Jovovich, where it's kind of like uh, he, this this 30-second sequence had like 20 sh cuts in it. And it's like, for God's sakes, it's not like that. That's when I would uh, dock something for cinematography because it's that's just lazy so acting was the best part of this um it's got at least i would say two decent performances in it and it does have some silliness in it uh when it comes to some of the uh stuff that you'll see in like the movie uh i think the was it the first trailer that had it where there's like um somebody playing on a swing set and the monster oh yeah right here the monster has them um like that kind of thing where it's kind of like 
okay, we see him getting thrown around, thrashed around, just like Freddy did when he's invisible, lifting the person up on the from the mattress onto the ceiling and stuff like that, right? Um, but it goes on perhaps a little too long, where it's kind of like, uh, okay, it was scary at, for the first few seconds, but then now it's kind of like, that's... <laughs> Should I be laughing at this or no? It's serious. This is supposed to be serious. And that falls to the execution of the director and the directing of not being able to properly uh, recognize the, the, the scare worked for just a few seconds and not being able to pull back on it, right? And it, it, it loses you. He overworked it. There, there, that's a good uh, way to think about it. He overworked it. Was it competently shot? Was the technical stuff done pretty well, I would say, but uh, would I say that it was serviceable? Yes, because I do think that there'll be some people out there that may like this, but the highlight is this acting. The story, I don't even know if I can give it a, a serviceable. The story is so schlocky. The, the base premise is interesting. The base premise, and, and most movies do have a base premise that's interesting, um, but I got to dock it for a lot of those things where, as I said, we should be calling the cops, but instead, let's sit down and talk about your feelings. And in talking about your feelings, let's get you dressed up in your nice uh, traditional uh garments and uh well, let's put some henna on oh, oh right i forgot that there's this big monster trying to come kill you it's like what what like what what <laughs> uh watchability factor guys um well if you're a horror fan i would say check it out it's got the one uh the one point for sure um and if this cultural thing works for you, uh, if you're a younger person, just if you're a horror fan, a fanatic, a horror fanatic would definitely check this out at least once. You don't want to buy this on Blu-ray or anything. You're not going to be waiting for the 4K steelbook release for this movie. Let me just say that. Um, <laughs> uh, this movie is going to come and go. Uh, it's from Neon that picked this up to distribute it from the producers of Get Out. That's not enough. Uh, but... Yeah, um, five out of ten. Uh, what were people saying about it on the tomato meter? Let's just take a look. 68% by critics, 38 by the audience. So I'm somewhere in between there, right? I'm not as harsh as the audience. And, and you know what? That cultural angle, I want to say, could be stepping on the toes of the people of, of that culture, too, because they are embellishing it, right? I don't know. Uh, let's go and take a look at some of the snapshot reviews and see what people are saying. Megan Suri. Yeah, she was the main character, right? She did good. Uh, and uh, and the father at, at times did did pretty well too, right? Inesh Vic Sahe or Saha Sahwe did well. So uh, Detroit News, Dutta. So they liked it. Data making his feature film directorial debut zeroes in on a thread of displacement and assimilation as felt through the immigration experience. Immigration? What the heck? Well, I guess the mother... They, there's a, there's one conversation between the mother and daughter saying, why did you come to North America kind of thing? Well, I guess it is sort of a subtle there in the background. You brought this thing over with all your negative emotions kind of thing. Ah, whatever. Uh, but the metaphor makes for odd bedfellows with a literal monster that is stalking around. And the monster reveal in this, sadly, is one of the weakest monster reveals that I've seen in a film in a long time. Uh, it was a valiant attempt, but it wasn't shot properly. It's kind of like, you know how Spielberg, if he showed the full shark that was like on the rails and stuff and you could tell that oh yeah that's just on the on being pulled on rails underneath the water if we actually saw that like what they did with jaws 4 where you can actually see that you could see the little arm coming up from underneath the shark to, that held it on the track that's the difference 
Uh, Spielberg knew what he had, and he shot it limitedly. He gave us it in sparing shots. If the director had done that with the monster, it would have been far more effective. But when the full reveal comes, and you can tell that it's just not that good. Not that good. Jake Wilson didn't like it. The Age. The first feature film from the young Indian-American writer-director Bishal Dutta is an intermittently interesting example of the genre, though not especially a skillful one. So yeah, that's echoing my sentiment about the execution of the story. The director just didn't have the, the experience yet to take something like as mundane of a story like this. Demon in a jar gets out, kills a bunch of people. Um, it didn't add anything new. It didn't bring anything new to the table with that, right? Um, something new. Uh, Associated Press didn't like it. Something new. New faces. The new themes. A promising filmmaker to watch. But I would wish I could, uh, would have embraced more of the things that make it unique as opposed to trying to fit in with its genre brethren. Hmm. Yeah. Let's take a look at some other reviews. I wonder if Perry's on here yet. I would love to see what if she had posted something for this. Um, I'm not seeing it. If I scan over it, I apologize. But uh, yeah, you guys kind of get the feeling of uh, what this movie is. Um, Sci-Fi now says, if Bichelle Dutta's horror hybrid and adolescence Indian American risks losing her own soul to cultural conformity. Yeah, I can see that cultural conformity there. Oh, Matt Donato liked it though, huh? It Lives Inside is a demonic horror tale that plays recognizable genre hits with a cultural twist. Well, he was fairly forgiving to it to then. Wow. Wow. So five out of ten for me, guys. It lives inside. Uh, I said this. Just wait for the streaming. Put it on in the background when you're just kind of like, you need something in there and you're interested, you're in, slightly intrigued with it. Um, that's what I would say. Um, directorial debut from um, Baishol Dutta. That makes sense, uh, knowing that he's this is his first time outing. Um, oh, wow, he's really young, isn't he? Um, that's, that's not a problem. Um, Young people have made good films before. It's just the inexperience here did hit home. I think he's going to have other chances at bat because some of the technical stuff did work, like setting up the camera shots and um, locations, picking of actors in it. So he's done some TV stuff, some shorts, nothing really big and major. Um Directing, yeah. Um, it lives inside. Uh, could you do better this weekend? Well, Expendables 4 is out. The reviews for Expendables 4 are also... Well, actually, they're worse. They're terrible. <laughs> uh, guys, you know what you're getting with that. But out of the cultural things, uh, on Netflix, I would say go out and check out Johnny John, or it's under Suspect X on Netflix with Karina Kapoor. Uh, very interesting. And in fact, it's weird that uh, Johnny, or is it John? That word shows up in uh, It Follows. It's weird. That, and I saw both of those movies yesterday. It's curious that uh, life decided to give me that word because uh, I caught it. Of course I caught it. Uh, it was topical. But uh, anyway, if you had fun with it, if you liked it, let me know in the comments below what you liked. And if uh, you didn't, well, hey, then we're pretty much in agreement. If you like this kind of stuff, guys, um, come to the channel, subscribe. Uh, um, we do lots of fun stuff. As I said, we react to full movies like uh, Johnny John or Suspect X. My review for Inside It Lives Inside will be put up on the channel later separately. we got trailer reactions for A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Ahsoka, episode six is up on the channel too. We're watching Ahsoka and I'm really liking it. Trailer reactions for Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Movie reviews for Hunting in Venice. And of course, then we uh, we do movie news here at least two or three times a week. We're going to be trying to do at least one primetime show here an, uh, once a week at night. Um, and then uh, we'll be doing night shows on Facebook at least once a week too. So uh, come join us on 
the social media handles, Mirror Domains or Mirror Domains Official. And uh, yeah, we have lots of fun talking movies. All right, that's it for me, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. I'll see you next time on Mirror Domains. All right, let's take some live comments uh, from the uh, live chat because we're doing a live show here. Hourglass says, a director overcooking a scene is one thing, James, but for the producer and editor not to crop the film to fit the tone is another. Yeah. Does the director oversee the special effects inserted in the scene? Yes, of course. Most definitely.